It has begun! Sup, Internet. Raggedy Adams here. Recently, Alex Day released this year's version of the YouTube survey, which is so popular, so I thought this time around I'd give it a go. These are my answers for the YouTube survey 2013. Number one, what is your biggest fear? As a kid, my biggest fears were probably fire, heights, and snakes. Over the years, I've kind of gotten used to the fire thing, mostly because over the years I've ended up as an on-again, off-again smoker. But I still have to deal with my fear of snakes and my fear of heights on a semi-regular basis. This is mostly due to the fact that I get crippling vertigo. Seriously, if I'm in like a glass lift or in a very tall building with like glass windows or a glass floor, or if I'm on a bridge over traffic that's kind of exposed, I will freak the fuck out. I do not like it. My body just reacts violently against it and I feel like I'm gonna just like topple over if the slightest breeze gets up at any moment. Snakes is kind of a weird one because it's not the big fuck off boa constrictors that I have a problem with. Because I know they won't bite me and I know they probably won't kill me. Little nippy snakes, like grass snakes and adders and things, I hate. Can't stand them. I recently had an encounter with a snake while I was cycling through a park. It sort of darted in front of the wheels of my bike. I'm about 50% certain that I ran it over. And do you know why I'm 50% certain? Because I didn't stop to check. I guess my other big fear is uh, fear of failure. Which sounds kind of weird until you realise that I'm a good six years, five, six years older than the majority of the people in my current peer group. That tends to make it feel like you're slipping behind, that you're running the risk of failing through just sheer inertia. I guess the act of seeing yourself make progress kind of allays that fear a lot. It's like the phrase says, may my enemies live long so that they can see me progress. I've been listening to too much de food. Number two, how did you find out Santa wasn't real? Back when me and my sister were still growing up, my parents used to keep most of the big presents that we get in big bags. Not like black bags, but like big polythene bags that they stored in the cupboard. And those were basically brought out on Christmas morning and would have most of the stuff in it. And because as a kid, I didn't really keep normal sleeping hours at the best of times, I'd often find myself waking up at stupid hours of the morning wondering why Christmas dinner was still cooking away in the oven and there were barely any presents underneath the tree. But eventually if you have any sense of the reality of the world and just the fact that your parents are the ones responsible for making sure that Christmas happens, you kind of put it together over time and it's not that big of a deal. I'd sooner know that my parents worked really hard to put on a really good Christmas for me and my sister than, you know, think that it was all the result of some magic dude with a big beard. I think I may have just made an analogy for the entirety of the Christian religion, but I don't want to get stoned to death as a heretic. Number three, what's the best idea you ever had? Hand on heart, being with the Jojo. If I weren't with her, I wouldn't be doing any of the things that are making my life a lot better. I wouldn't have gone back to university. I wouldn't be doing any of the filmmaking stuff I'm doing. I wouldn't be doing vlogging. And I certainly wouldn't be writing reviews for a website that I love. None of that would have happened without her support, and I thank my lucky stars every day that I chose to be with her. Love you, Jojo. Number four, what's the most embarrassing thing your parents have ever done? This is where my memory tends to get a little bit patchy, because most of the things that my parents do to embarrass me are because of things I've actually done. If I tell you about them embarrassing me, I'll just be owning up to things that I've actually done myself, and I don't really want to have to do that. However, when I was a kid, I was a little roly-poly ball of fat. Not like stupidly overweight, but I was fat. I wasn't a skinny child. As a child of the 80s, I was raised in a household where you didn't waste stuff. My mother especially was forced to eat a lot of stuff that she didn't really like as a kid and then promptly ended up doing exactly the same with me. Stuff I've since grown to 
be a little more forgiving of, but stuff that as a kid you're going to complain about. The whole thing reminds me of the old Alan Sherman joke of how his mother used to tell him to clean the plate because children were starving in Europe, and how he thought that by him eating all the food off his plate, or just generally eating lots in general, he was keeping children from starving in Europe, when in reality they kept starving and he got fat. So this carried on until I was about 11 or 12, and, and then all of a sudden I stopped putting on weight. My mum was actually starting to worry that I was underweight. No one could figure out what was going on, and then all of a sudden... You know, I've got a little bit of a belly on me at the moment, but that's beer-induced. My thighs are a bit thick as well, but that's just muscle from cycling. That, however, isn't the embarrassing part of my story. Do you really want to know what my mum used to call me when I was a baby? The Michelin Man. Thanks, Mum. And finally, number five. If you were only allowed to pick one career for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, that's an easy answer. Film director. And that's it. That's this year's survey. I just want to say thank you to James Hayward for unofficially tagging me and asking me to do this. What can I say? Guy likes my videos, and I'm always happy to do requests. Thanks, James. Just a little housekeeping before I forget. I'm going to be co-starring in someone's final project. It's currently on Indiegogo. It's an exploitation action revenge film called Sister Vengeance. I will be co-starring in it as a character called Screwdriver. So, fun. Link to them in the description. Please, please, please help them out. And as of this recording, they're at 331. So, if you do that, I will love you forever. Secondly, for those who've been following my channel, I recently recorded some behind-the-scenes footage for a film called What Goes Up by GS Productions, directed by Matt Gamble. And today, their first teaser trailer came out. Link to that in the description also. I'm still doing my column at Chud, and I've got a bumper edition coming up for you soon. In addition, there will be a link in the doobly-doo for my next video, which is going to be an open letter to DC Comics. So... Stuff. Lots of it. In the meantime, Raggedy Adams out.